This video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, today, Manny's putting down the camera and uh, starting off my modeling career. Here we go, two triangles. You know it, you know it, hype me up, hype me up. As much anxiety as it gives me to be in front of the camera, I need a new headshot. And I need it for a little secret project that I got going on. And look at this setup right here. I'm gonna look straight, fire. But in Chicago, there's a photographer called John Gress. Applauso, applauso. Yes, the red carpet walk. Um, this dude is absolutely inspiring, okay? He's definitely worth the follow on Instagram. I had to come here and it's an honor to be here. Are you gonna make me look like a badass? I don't know, after that triangle thing, I don't know that I Yeah, but I, 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 I need help. I need, obviously I need a lot of help. So if you thought you looked awkward or felt awkward on camera, I definitely feel that way. Um, do I have any triangles? Maybe if I do something yeah, like let's that? Let's not go there, okay? Okay, let's not Okay, go look, there. I'm just trying to learn from you today. So you've seen a lot of dramatic portraits, usually with athletes, where there's a lot of sort of LED tubes in the background making uh, this very cool effect. I saw something like that a few years ago, and I wanted to figure out how to do it with photography equipment, where we weren't actually relying on purchasing a few thousand dollars worth of tubes. So I went out to the art supply store. Um, around here, there's one called Blick. Um, maybe, I don't know what the one might be where you're located, but I bought these four by eight sheets of foam core, and then I cut some about three feet by one and a half inch um, slits in each one, and um, made five of them. And that sort of will mimic our uh, LED tubes. At the time I had some Kino flows and I measured them and they are an inch and a half thick. So I thought this would be the exact scale. Of course, the main feature of this look is to have a bunch of light coming from behind through the slits and the tube. So on the back of this uh, V flat sort of that I've made here out of black foam core, I've put a simple opaque shower curtain from Home Depot that costs a whole $10 and on under on the other side from that, I've got two umbrellas with two lights um, on each side, and that's just pumping light forward. And then in order to get some separation between Manny's hair and the background, I've got this hair light up here, and that's just gonna sort of illuminate his curls and bring his shoulders um, off of this. And the light's gonna come through and also sort of hit his jaw, maybe hit his arm, and give us some separation there as well. And since all of the lights are strips in the background, I wanted the light for the main light to also be a strip. That way we get a very skinny strip light, um, catch light in his eyes. So I've got this one by three strip or it's actually 35 by 90 centimeters over here as our main light. So let's go ahead and get Manny on set. Oh, and I have a little bit of a surprise. Um, as Manny is gonna start his modeling career today, yes. I've gotta teach him all about makeup and I can show you guys how to do it really quick too. As you can see, he is trying to work on his posing here and his blue steel sort of gaze, Sexy. but there is a small problem and that is that I need the right tool. And now I can show you that problem. And that is there's a lot of specularity in the highlights here on the oils in his skin that's sort of like under his, uh, under his left eye and on his forehead. Mm. So the best thing you can do to alleviate that is just to apply some very simple makeup. And you can get makeup that comes in five different shades. And this is, I think, a tip that I tell every photographer I meet usually. Revlon has a product called photo ready and it comes in four different shades one of them is clear that's called 10 then 20 um that's more like a person from ireland that doesn't get a lot of sun then there's 20 and that's me and then there's 30 and that's manny and then they stopped which is a little bit annoying uh, for a number of reasons um, and uh, not only for us but i think culturally they should have continued to go um, and so the other product you can get is called Black Opal, and they have uh, four shades in their powder line, and the darkest two colors are the ones that you wanna get. And the lighter of the two, that would be the third darkest, that would be great for someone who may be more Afro-Latino or a person of other mixed heritage or perhaps even uh, um, from Asia, but nearer the equator, if you will. Um, so that color will be good for them. And then the darker shade is good for most people that are of African descent. And if you have those five shades, you can pretty much do anybody's makeup as long as you have a brush or in this case, a sponge to apply it.
And that really is the biggest reason why we do makeup on set. And the reason why I think um, most people should do it is just because you will have to spend a lot of time in Photoshop trying to paint these highlights away and you can simply paint them away in person and it only takes maybe like three minutes. This is the product that we're gonna be applying today and it's just Revlon and it's called Blurring Powder, Photo Ready Blurring Powder Ooh. and it is shade 030. What I do is I scrape this off with a plastic knife mm. um, onto a paper plate and that way I will never be dipping into the makeup and putting it on someone's face and then dipping into the makeup and putting it on someone else's face. So that keeps everything very clean. And you can get these wedges also in like a 30 pack or a hundred pack for about seven bucks on Amazon. And that's really all you need. So I have the makeup here on a paper plate. Um, perhaps it's Chinette, I'm not really <laughs> sure, um, in powder form. And then we're just gonna apply that. I always start with the forehead and I don't know why, but I do. And the good thing about the paper plate is that if you keep it right under their jaw, it can't get onto their shirt. So I'll start off going up here. And I'll warn you when you need to close your eyes, but I'm gonna go right up to the hairline with the sponge and I'm gonna come down right up right down to his eyebrows. All right, this is what's, this is next for me. <laughs> this, this is, is gonna- my photography journey, I need to learn how to do this. This is gonna have you looking photo ready in every video from now on, let's see. Okay, so as you can see, like I'm putting it on kind of rough and then I'm just using the sponge to blend it. And so a lot of times when I see people do this the first time, they're putting it on very gingerly and you kind of just need to get in there and go for it. So close both of your eyes mm -hmm. and this is gonna make it so that he looks well rested and he did look well rested, but he's gonna <laughs> look a little more well rested now. That's a lie. <laughs> okay, and then I'll go over the other eye. You kind of wanna make sure you get it in there in that corner. And if you saw, there was some powder that fell off there. Let's not worry about that right now. That's why we're using the plate, but you just wanna get the sponge in there in that corner. Okay, that's good. Now we just need to blend. Okay, and when it fell off, it went on his mustache here. So I'm just gonna use the clean side of the sponge to blot that off and it's fine. So we're gonna hit this sort of lower cheekbone area on each side and get some product going there. I didn't get the tip of his nose. And I use this on like every shoot that I do um, most of the time. Sometimes I do work with makeup artists, but if it's just something simple, like making a guy look their best really quick so I have to do less Photoshop, then I'm all about doing it this way. All right. So I'm always usually forgetting to get this area near the nose here. And then most people because Manny's a little different. They have an area with no hair right here. So I will hit those two spots too. But those are the two things, the two areas that I always forget are those spots. Okay, so I think I've got that pretty well blended. I think that'll be good. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shoot a test frame and see if it will, um, if I messed anything up. And then we'll show you guys a side by side with and without makeup so you can see the difference. And now we've got a side-by-side -side of Manny with and without makeup. So you can see that he's already looking photo ready Ooh. right here uh, on camera. We didn't have to Photoshop Damn. it. Wow, that's more pronounced than I thought, honestly. Okay, yeah, it makes a big difference and it really will speed up your workflow and it doesn't even cost that much. Damn. Oh, and one caveat. It may be unlawful for you to apply makeup in the state you live. So make sure that you don't need a license to do it. But in some <laughs> states, it's okay. Oh, hey, this is me in the middle of the video. If you are a photographer, videographer, you should have a website. You should not rely on social media because you do not own that. That is not yours. If Instagram goes down, do you even exist? Squarespace is so easy to use. Your grandma can do it. They offer 24 seven customer support. You can host an online store like I do where I sell my Lightroom presets and retouching tutorial. You have to check them out. If you use the coupon code Manny, you will get 10% off 
your first purchase. So for this portrait of Manny, I wanted to create something that was really dramatic. And for me, that usually means contrast and edge lighting and strip soft boxes are great for creating that. So on set right now, you can see I have three strip soft boxes and I'm gonna give you some tips as to why they are where they are and sort of how I'm using them. So this is our main light. And when you use a strip box or really any soft box for that matter, as your main light, um, you want the head to be higher than your subject's eyes. And it would be even better if you had the bottom of the soft box equal with their jaw. I just can't really move it up right now anymore because of the boom for the hair light. The reason is, is that you wanna make sure that your shadows from that light primarily go downwards. You don't want highlights coming upward on the person because that'll make them look sinister. And then the secret sauce for me, a lot of the times is a hair light. And you want your hair light to be positioned sort of behind the person, pointed down at the top of their head and their shoulders. And the reason why that light is there is just to create some separation between the subject and the background. And it's also there to sort of create highlights on Manny's curls. And that'll have a pretty good effect in the image overall. You want the hair light to be about one or two stops darker um, than your exposure is metered with a light meter up here. Um, that way the curls won't be screaming at the viewer. They'll just be a little shiny and have some nice detail there. Then the next thing is having another strip light behind the person. You probably have noticed this black card the entire time. And this is just a regular piece of 20 by 30 inch foam board or foam core or poster board from the office supply store. You don't need to use a real flag. The reason why it's here is I wanted to darken down the top of his shoulders and his back and I wanted to do it in camera. This is sort of like burning but in person. The reason why I like to do it this way is because burning in camera, so to speak, will get you far better results quicker than if you try to do it in post. Because if you try to burn in Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One, you're gonna waste a lot of time and it's just not gonna look as good as if you put this card in here and did it in person. And then holding it up is this Manfrotto magic arm or variable friction arm as it's known formally. And it has this clip on here. And this basically will allow you to hold anything you want out into space and any position. And then you just spin this dial to lock it down. And then you can put this in here. And maybe instead of using a black card, you could use a white card for fill in another setup with the same hardware. So it's really versatile and great. And you just sort of clip this in here and it's right in position. And then the next thing is you can use the stand to change the height, or I guess you could loosen this up and change the height as well, but this is really an easy way to go. Now, another thing that's really important with this type of portrait is fill. And you want the fill to be just enough. You want some detail like in the line that's in the side of his hair and um, the gradient in his beard. You want that to show up. So I've added this um, 120 centimeter Ellen Chrome light motive up here um, with an ELB 500 head in it. Really, um, which head it is and which softbox it is isn't really um, that important. You just want something that's large and probably soft or white because that'll create just very subtle fill in your shadows. Whereas if you try to use like a small circular reflector, you're gonna end up with some weird like crispy highlights coming back at you and some weird contrast in the shadows, in your image, your shadows will have their own shadows and it just won't be right. This will keep things looking very subtle. And you just wanna set that in there, maybe around three or four stops down and test it out and just move the throttle on the power up and down until it looks right for you. So look now, look straight ahead at the clock. Uh, turn your head a little bit towards me. A little more. I got to get that reflection back. I guess you're now looking at the V flat. Mm -hmm. So think very determined thoughts. Like. Okay, not that one. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> that was a different type of determination. Great. All right, so earlier I said we needed to keep the hair light just right so that it wasn't too bright. 
and I think it's a little too bright. One, two, three, four. So I just moved it down four tenths, and now we should be good. And there's before and after. It's, just, it's very subtle, great. Perfect. Great, okay, why don't you come look at it and see if you're happy. I want to thank John Gress again for his time and for his, that photo was bomb. I loved it, that's exactly what I was looking for. I need a little bit of edge. Great, thank little, you, I had a lot of fun too. A little bit of edge. And also, working with him, actually, I, I actually learned a couple of things. I learned some things too. A, little, a lot of little things that you do, I'm like, what is, wait, oh, I see now, the little adjustments. I mean, I know that, I know sometimes I make adjustments, but the, you were doing micro adjustments and getting me in different, all these different angles and versus just like maybe one or two. Like a lot of little things that you did, I'm just like, huh, oh, I like that. I like it. Thank you. Uh, sometimes I light for an area with a larger, softer light, but when I use smaller light sources, like this one by three strip or that larger strip we were using before, then it gets very micro adjusty. Mm. Um, so that, that is kind of the difference. I can kind of go both ways, but. Yeah. But all I know is that when, I, when you showed me the photos, I liked having more options. Like usually I'll do a couple, couple okay. of adjustments. I think this looks good, but I like having all the little, little adjustments and I have a lot to choose from as, as a person being photographed. Yeah. So that's one thing I liked. And I also, the, the makeup was a great idea. Something I'm gonna have to learn. And another thing, if you're dealing with clients, you can also switch the background really quickly and get a totally different look. Or um, you could have them change their shirt, or if it's a guy, put on a sports jacket or something, uh, suit jacket, and you can get some very quick variations without taking up any time. Pretty good stuff, man. This is a longer video than normal, but I'm sure there's, there's just a ton of value in this video, thanks to you, because me, I just get, I just, I just talk through things. Like I'll skip everything and I'll just get straight to the meat. And then, but you're very thorough and I appreciate people like that. Um, so thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for the headshots. Go follow this guy. His stuff is amazing. His Instagram is insane. All right. Thank you.